You're watching no more news. His business empire was crumbling. The headline was quite accurate. Welcome to the 90s, Donald. <laughs> because it was like he got whacked right in the face. It was amazing. His empire could be at risk of collapse if the New Jersey Casino Commission decides not to approve Trump's bailout plan. By the fall of 1991, all three casinos had filed for bankruptcy. You know, I had a wife who was suing me for $2 billion. I had uh, the banks, I had this, I had that. Back in the 1990s, you owed something like $900 million. Your empire was pretty much... Much more than that. You owed more than that? 975 was personally guaranteed. That was just the small part. That was the harder debt. But I owed many, many billions of dollars. The leverage shifted dramatically over to the banks because it was no longer an issue of a bank and a piece of real estate. It was a bank and Donald Trump's actual survival. Trump owed money all over town to 72 banks in all. Pomerantz represented them as a group. How close was he to going personally bankrupt? Very. Trump makes a point of saying he never went personally bankrupt. But there's a reason why the banks decided to keep Trump whole. We made the decision that he would be worth more alive to us than dead. Dead meaning in bankruptcy. We don't want him to be in bankruptcy. We want him out in the world selling these assets for us. So you wanted him alive because he was a salesman and could best sell his own properties. That's correct. We kept him alive. I think bankers look at Trump as a promoter, not as a CEO. At least that's the way I looked at him. And if you talk to other bankers, they, I think they share that opinion. He's a wonderful promoter. He, you know, he's the P.T. Barland of the 21st century. Donald Trump may have pulled off his biggest deal to date. Donald Trump had survived. He was too big to fail. The bankers do not want Trump to file for bankruptcy. There is this very influential small group, relatively small group, of Jewish donors who give a disproportionate amount of the money to the Republican Party. Casino mogul Sheldon Adelson. He's worth an estimated $30 billion. And in fact, in 2012, he already spent $100 million in his attempt to defeat Barack Obama. A season in politics now known as the Adelson primary. Republican presidential hopefuls eager to attract support and maybe millions from casino mogul Sheldon Adelson. I am not Israeli. The uniform that I wore in the military, unfortunately, was not an Israeli uniform. It was an American uniform. Although my wife was in the IDF, and one of my daughters was in the IDF, and my two little boys, our two little boys, one of whom will be bar mitzvah tomorrow, hopefully he'll come back. Thank you. Hopefully he'll come back, his hobby is shooting, and uh, he'll come back and be a sniper <laughs> for, the, uh, for the IDF. All we care about is being good Zionists, being good citizens of Israel. All we care about is being good Zionists, good citizens of Israel.
That victory would not have come without one other person besides Donald Trump, Sheldon Adelson. It is not about resources. It's about counsel, guidance, and wisdom. Sheldon Adelson didn't cut and run. Sheldon Adelson had Donald Trump's back. Sheldon Adelson offered guidance and counsel and wisdom of how to get through it. He was there for Donald Trump about how to comport oneself and how to dig down deep. And it was his guidance and his wisdom to help get us through. I am proud to stand with the state of Israel. That's why I'm proud to be a Christian Zionist. That's why I'm proud to be a partner to one of the greatest nations on earth and the foundation of the Judeo-Christian West. I want to thank you, and I'm proud to be a Christian Zionist. Thank you. He has really become a leading donor and a leading figure in this hawkish, pro-Israel, conservative um, sort of circle that is so influential in American politics. And the new embassy may not have, have happened if it weren't for the man many call the godfather of the Republican Party. Billionaire casino magnate Sheldon Adelson. There he is in the front row with his wife, Miriam. There she is. He was instrumental in persuading Trump to make the move. Adelson is worth around $40 billion U.S. According to Bloomberg. Uh, <laughs> You're the 10th richest Fools. man in the world. Tenth, maybe it's, but think about that. There's seven billion people. That means there's six billion, nine hundred and ninety nine million, nine hundred and ninety thousand people that are not at my level. Why is Adelson so driven on these causes, the mostly is Israeli causes? He is a cause donor. It's it's been uh, really his animating political issue behind his donations for some time. The billionaire uses his fortune to influence a lot of policy. He's the GOP's biggest donor, shelling out about $100 million to elect Trump and other Republicans in 2016. People are scared to some extent to cross him because they fear that if they anger him and fall out of favor with him, that his fund, not only funding from him will dry up, but funding from this larger circle of Jewish American donors who are uh, who give a lot of money in Republican politics.
became one of the most politically connected lawyers in the nation. The last two decades of his career were marred, however, by allegations of fraud, blackmail, and perjury. Roy Cohn is the single most evil person I have ever covered. If that's a magnet for you as a young man, it says you're soulless before you start. Donald Trump is probably one of the most important names in America today. He is, as I say, the closest thing to a genius I've ever met in my life. I'm a very stable genius. None of the collusion narrative has been proven here except with respect to Israel, a very inconvenient area for Russiagate enthusiasts. How does Israel play into all of this? Well, Israel's central in this, and what we're looking at is actually Israel Gate. The man on the right with Trump at the hotel launch party, Felix Sater, a twice convicted felon once tied to organized crime in a massive stock scam. Someone Trump now maintains he barely knows. In his videotaped testimony obtained by ABC News, Trump said he could not even recall what Sater looked like. If he were sitting in the room right now, I, I really wouldn't know what he looked like.
Sater, an executive at a real estate company, was actively involved in a number of proposed deals with Trump. Here they were together in Denver in 2005. And in 2010, three years after Sater's mob ties became public, the Trump Organization issued Sater business cards identifying him as a senior advisor to Donald Trump with a Trump Organization email address and phone number. Why didn't you go to Felix Sater and say, you're connected with the mafia, you're fired? Well, Two years ago, Trump cut short a BBC interview after being pressed about Sater. I hate to do this, but I do have that big group of people waiting, so I have to... Okay, no, hold on, one last question. Trump later said under oath he did not remember being interviewed by the BBC. Do you recall doing the interview? No, I don't. 